What is up, watch friends? Welcome to another episode of Talking Time Pieces with Tony. I am Tony, and I am wearing my, yes, you know, on the honeymoon phase, so I'm wearing it every day. Uh, Rolex OP41. I'm going to do a full review on this eventually. I just, right now, I'm just enjoying it. So, um, so today we're going to talk about Rolex, uh, the pre-owned, certified pre-owned program that they've got going on. Plus, I have some additional news that I got directly from my AD. So let's roll the intro and we will get into it. You're watching Time Pieces with Tony. Talking Time Pieces with Tony. You're watching Talking Time Pieces with Tony. All right, so first and foremost, uh, a lot of you who do watch my channel know that I have a really good relationship with my AD. I've purchased many, many watches and way too many in the last year. I think I bought this year alone three Rolex, um, Datejust 41, my Submariner, my OP, not including the Cartiers and everything else I bought, Nomos, Mont Blanc stuff like that anyway uh so i have a good relationship with my ad one uh at bindi jewelers and i ask him questions of course i do you know i want to get insight i want to know stuff you know um certainly probably doesn't tell me everything that he does know but he does generally answer my questions and one of the questions i asked was about is it going to be easier for uh you to be able to buy rolex like in the display, you know, are the, are the, you know, I took, I took video of their display cases. It's still all exhibition models. Um, I think what's uh, what that guy's name, Mark Goldberg, he has a channel and he's adamant that the, those Rolexes are all working Rolex. Um, but they're just display models that it will eventually get sold. This I can tell you is not true. Um, in my AD, a lot of those watches just have dummy movements in them. They're not, they're not real. They don't work. But, uh, anyway, Having said that, you know, the display cases are still, I mean, there's, there's display models in there, exhibition models, right? Um, and I asked him about the demand. Are people still asking about, you know, or is there, you know, about this list, you know? Um, and he said the demand is as high as it ever was. Um, they're getting about 400 requests for the Submariner a month. That's about 100 a week. And that's just for the Submariner, all right? Um, I asked to be put on or his list for the Daytona and he kind of laughed and said, dude, those are really hard to get. Um, he said, in fact, he personally has never sold one. See, those watches are allocated. They come in. Bindi has a few locations and those watches are allocated, uh, divided between all the reps that work in the stores and they get certain models. Um, and then however models they get, they sell them. That's pretty much it. Simple as that. I did ask him about the, uh, uh, new facility that Rolex is building to increase production by 30%, which, um, you know, that's about 300,000 watches a year. And he said, yeah, but we know that that facility is not going to be completed probably several years down the road. Um, and he also said right now they've decreased production by 20%. Um, based on with, uh, some kind of gas shortage, and I heard something about that, and I think you guys probably have too, um, whether it was real or not, whatever, but apparently it is true. Um, again, this is coming straight from my ID. I'm not making this up, um, that they have cut by 20%. And at the moment, they're not producing any watches. In fact, they're not going to go back into production until April of next year, 2023. So right now, they're not even working. But apparently, every year, they take three or four months off, which... I don't know, but that's, again, that's just what he was telling me. So who knows, but, uh, the demand is still there, but I think a lot of the people that aren't buying the Rolex, uh, you know, the watches anymore, the people that when, when the hype was all hype and hype and hype, you know, everyone wanted a Rolex. And I think what has happened now, these people that were just trying to jump on the bandwagon are no longer interested, or there's a lot of people going oh fuck it. I don't care anymore, whatever it may be. Um, the hype is dying down to a certain extent. Some of the flippers are just withering away. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, okay. So having said that, I think, uh, as far as 
their uh, certified pre-owned. I did a video about six months ago on this um, and it got hardly any views. But anyway, I'm going to go and I'm going to put my take on this, okay? Because the people are, are doing their reviews. It is news. It's Rolex news. So, of course, these channels are jumping on it and doing the, the same videos and showing the same generic Rolex of the GMT with the, the beige or the, the tan uh, wallet and the tan uh, superlative chronometer tag. Uh, I think Oshin um, said he likes those tags and the wallet better than the green ones. However, if that's how they normally came and then they came out with a green one, it would probably be just the opposite. You know what I mean? So having said that, uh, John P., I don't know. I watched part of his video. I can't really watch his videos, but um, it said, you know, it almost sounded like he was scared. Uh, it's like, oh, I mean, who really cares about having a trinket? I mean, if that's what you care about with your watch, your pre-owned watch, then having a trinket. Yeah, I have news for you. Uh, that little trinket adds value to what that watch is. All the paperwork, the, that trinket, that superlative chronometer hang tag is part of the paperwork essentially. And it is what adds value. It says that that watch is a genuine certified pre-owned Rolex. It's not a Frankenstein. It doesn't have a bullshit dial on it, aftermarket dial, or, you know, something in the watch that could have been changed, uh, by, uh, another, you know, a watchmaker when they were servicing it, whatever it may be that shows authenticity of the watch, that card and that paper and that tag and the pouch that it comes in adds value to that watch. Another thing that people are talking about is, uh, you know, how much are these watches going to cost? You know, um, I think another channel mentioned that, you know, well, you can, we don't have this watch in stock, but we have another one that's used but it's going to cost you five grand more than the new one. I mean, who's going to do that? Well, here's the thing. If Rolex are buying those watches, now I don't know, because okay, this is all available in Europe right now at like Bucherer and whatever, not in the United States, but Bucherer is in the United States and they sell pre-owned watches. Now they're not Rolex certified pre-owned, but they are probably, um, you know, they probably have a, the warranty and all that stuff that, that Bucherer do. If, you say, and, and also the watch has to be over three years old, right? So here's the thing. Let me, let me go back to say 2018. I bought a Datejust 36 millimeter with a uh, Jubilee bracelet. That watch retailed in 2018 for 6,700 bucks, 6,750, something like that. Now, obviously today in the gray market or whatever it is, it, the value's gone up on those and whatever. But do if, if, all right, let me try to rephrase this. If you're going to sell your Rolex to Rolex as a cert to, to be a certified pre-owned, are you going to take it to the AD and the AD purchases it, then sends it to the to the uh, Rolex center to be serviced? I don't think so. I think you might have to take it to the service center and sell it to them. That I'm almost thinking is how it's going to work, but I'm not. Uh, again, I'm speculating. But I can guarantee you, if it is Rolex that are going to buy these watches, certify them. Now my cat's going crazy, running around in circles, tearing up the carpet. But uh, uh, I can pretty much say that Rolex are not going to fucking pay over retail for their, for their own watch. A watch that they can essentially, obviously, how much ever they it could cost them to manufacture that watch. They're not going to pay over retail. You know, they're going to buy it as cheaply as possible or in as expensively as possible. Do what they have to do. Then give it to the AD with the paperwork, and then the price is going to be set. I would imagine, and I'm just again speculating, that those watches are now going to be at a much lower under retail than if you were to get a new one. So, for instance, say for instance, you take a Datejust at uh, 6,700 bucks. What are they now? Say 8,000. Just again, they're not going to sell that Datejust for 8,000 or 9,000 dollars. They might sell it just under retail. But I can't imagine they're going to jack it up. Well, we're going to sell you this $10,000 watch for $15,000. So I I'm assuming that they're going to be at a lower price point, which in a sense is great. Because um, again, those flippers, it's good. The, the, the market's going to adjust the way that they're going to adjust. And the gray market dealers that have been doing this for years and years will adapt. Simple as that. They always have and they always will. Because the only people it really hurts are the ones that were just getting into it and just starting to flip Rolex. 
you know? Gray market dealers have been around a long time. Pre-owned watches have been around as long as watches have been around, right? So I think this could be a good thing. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, it's going to start in uh, the fall of next year, I think, in the United States, in Europe. It's already starting. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. And granted, there might already be new news as to how that process is going to work for the selling aspect of it and the purchase aspect of it. But I think it's really cool because now Rolex have taken that market and saying, hey, you know, we are, we're aware of what these prices are going for on the secondary market. And we don't agree with it either. You know, buying a Tiffany blue OP for $30,000 on a $6,000, $6,100 watch. You know what I mean? So it's, it's going to change a lot. All right. So I don't, but again, this is just a speculation on my part. I'm not speaking by fact. The only thing I'm speaking that I fairly, uh, I'm confident about is what my AD told me about the production cut for 20% right now and shutting down for three or four months or whatever it was. So having said that, um, I, again, appreciate everyone who likes and subscribes to my channel. Um, it's getting into the holiday seasons. Um, I did a test live stream, so I will be live streaming at that event that I'll be co-hosting uh, December 15th, and I'll post more on that later. Having uh, said all of this, I wish you all the best, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.